So I recently hit a 225 OHP and since then many lifters have asked what I did to build up to it. So in today's video, I'll be teaching you exactly that. So hopefully you too can skyrocket those vertical pressing gains. So the first thing I'll say is that this lift was unintentional. I did not wake up that week or even morning with the idea of doing a 225 OHP. I was simply searching for a max effort variation since I'm trying to improve my bench press. I was completely detached and didn't really pay much attention to it. But the moment I started warming up and the weights were really flying, I was like, oh damn, two places guaranteed to occur. I had not a shred of doubt in my mind, which is rare to happen, by the way, when it comes to vertical pressing since it's so much harder. But I knew it was gonna go down, so that's when I took out the camera. So when I got it, I was obviously happy but not surprised because I believe in the messages I send you. When I consistently say that strength is strength, that by taking your numbers to a certain level, as well as acquiring a certain degree of musculature, that you're already gonna be strong, even if you're not training in the most specific way, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I am trying to help you guys out. I want you to reach your limit. And this is the exact same pattern that you've seen time and time after again, year after year. I walk the walk, I'm showing you what's possible. It was the same thing when I did my 230 pound weighted dip. Hadn't done that exercise in months. Heck, we even saw this with my first 385 bench. A week before, I did a 350 Swiss bar bench. So what I'm saying is, getting a two plate OHP was inevitable. And I was in fact capable of more. But I'm not gonna claim that. Because that's what I displayed that day. But if I would have done a little bit of peaking, a little bit of specialization, hey, who knows what would have been possible? Maybe five to 15 pounds more. I'm not gonna speculate. All I will say is that strength is strength. And I have proved this over and over again. In this case, I've been trying to get a 405 bench press, which I believe is really freaking close, if not already there with a little bit of peaking. So what is that compared to 225 on a vertical press? From a ratio standpoint, a two plate overhead presser is usually gonna be in the 300s. Minimum 315, highest point 350. The guys approaching 405 like myself are the outliers. But still, if we're in that upper range, by default, you're gonna have a somewhat strong overhead press. In fact, a lot of the variations we do to improve our bench has direct carryover to the OHP. And that's what I've been telling you in regards to other exercises like doing the floor press and weighted dip to improve your flat bench without even doing it. It's the same premise here. And the only difference with the OHP compared to flat press is that we're taking out the pecs and it's arguably more raw slash strict. Now I'm gonna talk about the weakness portion of this video and what really helped me for driving up that OHP because yeah, strength is strength, but how do we get there is the question. All right, hope you didn't close off this video. So. I always had trouble locking weights out. Contrary to what a lot of people say on the internet, yes, you can have a lockout issue even if you're extremely explosive off the chest. Look at my vertical presses. It's always the same pattern. I explode, it hits about this point and I have trouble grinding it out. I can't tell you how many lockouts I've failed. And no, I'm not talking about stalling right about here. I'm discussing the final part of the range of motion. The range of motion that very few lifters fail. That is where I consistently had trouble. So when people tell me, oh, just do more pause overhead press, more dead overhead press, I already did that. And it didn't work as effectively as introducing variations that specifically target the top slightly more. What am I talking about? The overhead press with chains. This has been the single most effective variation I can think of for learning how to grind through the top. You really learn how to strain and it builds the triceps in a way that's specific to vertical pressing. So you've seen me include that into my rotation with the Swiss bar, the straight bar, you name it, it's been included. Besides that, I'd have to mention that the flat pressing in general with chains also carries over to the overhead press because that's my specific weakness. In fact, 
A lot of strongman competitors will tell you straight up that the close grip bench is one of the best accessories for improving the OHB. I've obviously done a lot of that too, but the main thing, if you look at my workout videos, is including variations that are more tricep focused, like Swiss bar benching. The neutral grip by itself lends it to be a more tricep dominant style of pressing. Close grip floor press, all the benching with chains, the bands, but in this case, I mostly use chains. The point is, I didn't just do regular bench press or even the simple close grip bench, even though that was included. It was mostly very hard variations that correct my tricep weakness, even including board pressing. Off a half board, one board, and doing it with chains. That's what it's been for me. And then finalize with direct tricep work, not being lazy on it. And for this, I found standard tricep pushdowns to be the most helpful. Before that, I was doing a tremendous amount of extensions, and I even included JM pressing temporarily, and that worked great. But for some reason, I find that a strict pushdown using one cable is giving me better carryover. And I believe that has to do with the fact that a bigger muscle has more strength potential. And with my hypermobile elbows, the pushdown feels a lot better compared to the other exercises. I recover a lot better too. So as you can see, there's nothing magical about my training. I've been using the max effort method on a frequent basis to learn how to train. So the skill itself is what allows me to be able to grind through on a one or max OHB, even if I'm not using those higher percentages. And then the tricep focus accessories further contribute to that carryover, hence a big OHB. So even though shoulders and triceps are both weak links, the tries were a bit more problematic for me. So focusing on that specifically really got the job done. But then we still got to talk about the shoulders, right? This is the final portion of the video. High volume overhead press, specifically done as a third press at the end of the program and sticking to reps of 10 to 15. It's the first time in a long time that I'm not doing a tremendous amount of triples and fives. I think I've done eight or 10 sets of three with 185 on the OHB. Guess what? That was brutal on my recovery and it didn't give me the strength gains that I thought it was going to for some odd reason. I found that pumping the volume up into the shoulders is better. As crazy as that may sound, you don't feel dead after doing it to the extent that a full back workout could be completed right after and the recovery is so much better. That's why I'm able to use such high volumes twice a week while also maxing out twice a week. If I would have done low rep OHB at the very end of the program, I think things would have turned out differently. So what I needed overall was more mass in the shoulders and the three sets of 10 obviously has a better stimulus fatigue ratio for this purpose. And you can make the argument that it's slightly better for hypertrophy. When I first started doing the high rep OHP, I was only hitting around 125 because I was fatigued and I wasn't really that good in that rep range. But after training it for months, I got doing well over a plate for higher reps. And that's what helped me out so freaking much. Because if you come in in a fresh state, what is it when you're used to all this other crazy stuff? It's nothing guys, it's really simple training. You do three by 10 twice a week on the OHP, you induce linear progression when possible, and that's gonna be very small increments of repetitions. You might get one rep every, I don't know how many workouts, because I can't quantify that for you, but it's still there. Then when progress begins to stall, you swap out the variation. And to me, that was the Swiss bar overhead press, which further contributed to my lockout strength, the regular way, and then the OHP with chains. Three exercises that could be milked for a long period of time because at the end of the program, it's an accessory, it's done for higher volume. That's all there is to it, guys. Simple and effective training using concurrent periodization, dedicating myself long enough. Not running away or giving up, and of course, trust in the process because that's all you really can do. So with that in mind, keep killing those gains, and I really hope that this video gave you some ideas on raising your overhead press or any major press for that matter, because a lot of common themes that we can apply to other compound movements. And these are just some of the things that I use this time around
to get to my current destination. If I was able to get a strong overhead press, despite having hypermobile elbows and it being one of my weakest lifts overall, then I believe a lot of you are capable of insane feats of strength. So enjoy the gains and I'll talk to you in next video.